Mars was impacted by a massive asteroid, and it could explain the Martian ancient geological mysteries, an asteroid at least 745 miles across. This is on phys.org. The ancient massive asteroid impact could explain the Martian geological mysteries by Ula Trabuk, University of Colorado at Boulder. A recent study says the origin and nature of Mars is mysterious and it has geologically distinct hemispheres, smooth lowlands in the north and cratered high elevation terrain in the south. This red planet also has two small oddly shaped oblong moons and a composition that sets it apart from that of Earth. New research by the University of Colorado at Boulder, Professor Stephen Modzis, outlines a likely cause for these mysterious features of Mars. It was a colossal impact with a large asteroid early in the planet's history. Now, a lot of people may not agree with this because of the fact that there have been various artifacts such as alien ET construction, things that look like walled cities, uh, pyramids, uh, the face on Mars, etc., tunnels, and they may totally disagree with this article, but we're going into it anyway because this is what they have put out into the scientific community. Now, Professor of Boulder, Stephen Moses, says it's likely a cause for the mysterious feature on Mars, a huge asteroid impact, a colossal impact with a large asteroid early in the planet's history. This asteroid, he says, about the size of Ceres, one of the largest asteroids in our solar system, smashed into Mars, ripping off a chunk of the northern hemisphere and left behind a legacy of metallic elements in the planet's interior. The crash also created a ring of rocky debris around Mars that may have later clumped together to form its moons, Phobos and Deimos. The study appeared online in the journal Geophysical Research Letters, a publication of the American Geophysical Union in June. Uh, this is also an article by was printed uh, July 18, 2017, so it's about two years old. Now, he says, we showed in the paper that from dynamics and from geochemistry that we could explain these three unique features of Mars. Joe Moses is a professor of Colorado University Boulder Department of Geological Sciences. He says this solution is elegant in the sense that it solves three interesting and outstanding problems about how Mars came to be. Astronomers have long wondered about these features. Over 30 years ago, scientists proposed a large asteroid impact to explain the disparate elevations of Mars' north and southern hemispheres. The theory became known as the, quote, single impact hypothesis, end quote. Other scientists suggest that erosion, plate tectonics, or ancient oceans could have sculpted the distinct landscapes. Support for the single impact hypothesis has grown in recent years supported by computer simulations of giant impacts. Professor Motzis thought that by studying Mars' metallic element and inventory, he might be able to better understand its mysteries. He teamed up with Ramon Brasser, an astronomer at the Earth Life Science Institute at the Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan, and they dug into it together. The team studied samples from Martian meteorites, and realized that an overabundance of rare metals such as platinum, osmium, and iridium in the planet's mantle required an explanation. Such elements are normally captured in the metallic cores of rocky worlds, and their existence hinted that Mars had been pelted by asteroids throughout its early history. By modeling how a large object such as an asteroid would have left behind such elements, Moses and Brazer explored the likelihood that a colossal impact could account for this metal inventory. Now we see that uh, Mars, from the, the images here, is pelted. It's got craters everywhere, just like the moon does. And we also have craters of asteroid and meteor impacts on Earth. 
and now yet how do we have life and these other planets do not have life mars we think does not have life and we believe that the moon does not have life if it does we have not found them we have not found this life now the two scientists first estimated the amount of these elements from martian meteorites and deducted that the metals account for about 0.8 percent of mars mass then they used impact simulations with different size asteroids striking Mars to see which size asteroid accumulated the metals at the rate they expected in the early solar system. Based on their analysis, Mars metals are best explained by a massive meteorite collision about 4.43 billion years ago, followed by a long history of smaller impacts. In their computer simulations, an impact by an asteroid at least 1,200 kilometers, that's 745 miles across, was needed to deposit enough of the elements. An impact of this size would, uh, also could have widely changed the crust of Mars, creating its distinctive hemispheres. In fact, Moses said the crust of the northern hemisphere appears to be somewhat younger than the ancient southern highlands, which would agree with their findings. Moses referred to the theoretical impact. He said, the surprising part is how well it fit into our understanding of the dynamics of planet formation. Such a large impact event elegantly fits into what we understand from that formative time, end quote. Such an impact would also be expected to have generated a ring of material around Mars that later coalesced into Phobos and Deimos. This explains in part why those moons are made of a mix of native and non-martial material. In the future, Moses will use Colorado University Boulder's collection of Martian meteorites to further understand Mars mineralogy and what it can tell us about a possible asteroid impact. Such an impact should have initially created patchy clumps of asteroid material and native Martian rock. Over time, the two material reservoirs became mixed and by looking at meteorites of different ages, Moses can see if there's further evidence for the mixing pattern and therefore potentially provide further support for a primordial collision. Quote, good theories make predictions, and quote, said Moses, referring to how the impact theory may predict how Mars make up. By studying the meteorites from Mars and linking them with planet-forming models, he hopes to better understand uh, to better our understanding of how massive and ancient asteroids radically changed the red planet Mars, that is, in its earliest days. Now, while we're here talking about Mars and impact craters from asteroids, this is one of the two moons. This is Phobos. The other one is Deimos, which looks like a rock, but this one is really strange. It has what is like an impact crater on one side here on the right, as you can see, and it's got these parallel lines. Uh, you know, whenever I see something that geometrical and parallel, it really is a coincidence to me how nature can create such perfectly parallel lines. Anyway, the astronomers say that this is uh, because of the asteroid impact on this area of the moon that uh, pieces of the asteroid came off and... Uh, grinded over the uh, moon surface, causing those grooves on it. Okay, now a little bit of the information on Phobos. It orbits at about 3,700 miles from the Martian surface, closer to its primary body than any other known planetary moon. It is so close that it orbits Mars much faster than Mars rotates and completes an orbit in just 7 hours and 39 minutes. And as a result, from the surface of Mars, it appears to rise in the west, moving across the sky in four hours and 15 minutes or less, setting in the east twice each Martian day. Phobos is one of the least reflecting bodies in our solar system. Surface temperatures range from about 25 degrees Fahrenheit on the sunlit side to minus 170 degrees Fahrenheit on the shadowed side. The defined surface feature is the large impact crater, as we said, it's called Stickney which takes up a substantial portion of the moon's surface. 
In November 2018, astronomers concluded that the many grooves on Phobos were caused by boulders ejected from the asteroid impact that created Stickney Crater that rolled around on the surface of this moon. Images and models indicate that Phobos may be a rubble pile together, uh, held together by a thin crust. Well, does that look like a rubble pile to you? If it was a rubble pile, this is just me being the devil's advocate here. If it was a rubble pile held together by a thin crust, quote unquote, then the asteroid impact would have showed us the rubble pile inside. And it can't be a thin crust, otherwise it would have cracked all over the place on the surface. Uh, it did not crack. It seems to be a very, very tough uh, crust. Very, very tough because of the fact that when the asteroid, must, it must have been huge to make that kind of an indented uh, groove inside of that, that side of the moon. And the pieces that they say came off it to make the grooves on the surface uh, did not cut the surface at all. They just made grooves, so it can't be a thin crust. Uh, so th whatever they're saying doesn't hold. Uh, and they said that, th that it is being torn apart by tidal intractions. Phobos gets closer to Mars by about about six feet every 100 years, and it's predicted that within 30 to 50 million years, it will either collide with Mars or break up into a planetary ring. So uh, this was uh, read from uh, Wikipedia, if you want more information on that. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.